I've said it before, I'm saying it again, the Scuf Reflex controller is not a third-party controller, it's just a Sony controller disguised as a third-party controller. Today we're going to open it up and find out if that's true. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. It's going to be a fun week for us here because we finally got our Scuf controller, we're finally able to test it out, tear into it, do all kinds of fun things with it. And one of the burning questions that I have is what's inside this controller. Now you can see I've got this controller here taunting you. This is our custom Gears and Tech FPS Pro controller. And I've done reviews before comparing this specifically to the Scuf Reflex controller. And I said, this controller you can build yourself for $200 versus this controller, which cost me $360. So for an extra $160, is it worth it? Well, you'll have to look at our long-term test review, which will be coming up, and you can look at our unboxing video, which has already come out. However, what I want to know today is, how does the insides of this controller compare to the insides of this? These are very similar controllers in the sense that this one includes four remappable back buttons due to the Rise 4 remap kit. This one has adjustable thumbsticks just like this one and I've done another video showing you how to swap the thumbsticks on this controller already. This one also has an additional feature that this one doesn't and that is the short throw clicky triggers. This one, I mean, it's an option, but they didn't have any available when I bought it. So a lot of you are stuck in the same position that I was in. You're fighting trying to get one of these, and I'm wondering why. All of that's going to be answered after we open it up and see what's inside. So the first thing we're going to do is open the scuff controller. Then I'm going to have to open this guy back up, which I don't really want to do. I've already been in this controller. I know what it looks like, but for your guys' sake, I do need to open it up so that we can get a side-by-side -side comparison right here, right now, where we can see what the insides look like and how they compare to each other. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. So how do you open the controller? Well, first thing you're gonna do, you've gotta remove this trim plate which it's nice because the fine folks at Scuff actually included tiny little tabs in here that you can get your fingernail into so that this pops off very easily. We also need to remove the L1 and the R1 face buttons. And we just I just get my little sparger under here and pop those off like that. And again, these all come off exactly the same as a regular PlayStation 5 controller. There's nothing new here. One thing that is cool like Scuff even redoes these buttons. Like they've got the same little Scuff. It's almost like a ghost camo on these. And it's quite high quality. Like it's not just cheap stuff. So it's no wonder the controller is so dang expensive. That will expose the four screws. There's a screw here, one here, and then there'll be one here and one here. Now that starts the question, what screwdriver am I using? I am using just a regular Phillips screwdriver. This is the screwdriver actually that came in the kit for the Rise Remap buttons. And I can happily report at least that this controller does not have any of the scuff proprietary security screws on it. Now ideally, this whole back button attachment is like a mold similar to the Rise kit with a ribbon cable. But that's it, four screws, and then we just grab here, there's a little hook I can pull, start pulling it apart. Now there are these tiny little hooks right here that do hold that on. Now you can use your little sparging tool to flip those up. All right, it's starting to come. Now you just gotta massage this, like this. Don't worry about that breaking sound, it's not actually breaking. Once we get it loose enough, we just gotta pop this front face plate out. Here are the two removable trim plates. So you'll notice they are very similar to the point of being the same. All the holes are in the same position and everything. The only difference is you can see here, there's a round hole here for the home button and here there's a PS shaped hole. If you were willing to take your custom PlayStation 5 trim plate from online, you can get like the extreme rate ones, different colors, whatever, and just drill this hole out to be actually round so that it fits that button. This would definitely fit 
on your scuff. All you got to do is make that hole round. And then we can compare kind of the front to the front. So here's our fronts. This guy, the holes here have actually been made a lot bigger so you can pull that cap off. Whereas this one is not big enough for us to pull the cap right off. Now, is there much change there for that? No, in fact, I suspected that a guy could take, if they were taking this faceplate off anyway, they could probably drill this hole out bigger to be just like this as well so that you could swap those caps. Now, if you've got the thumbsticks like I've got on here, you don't need to swap those caps anyway, they'll stay forever. It's just that Scuff wanted to have something a little bit different. I'm gonna pull these buttons off. And the question that we might wanna know, can a Scuff face button fit on here? Let's try it out. Yes, that is interesting. So. The SCUF L1 and R1 buttons fit on SCUF and they fit on the controller. But can you see the profile here? The profile of the button here is actually shorter. It's slimmer than this one. It doesn't stick out as far. That is fascinating. So this is the factory PlayStation 5 button. This is the SCUF button. They have made slight change to the depth of that button. And when I look at this guy, I've got the scuff button on this side and the PlayStation 5 button on this side. You can see the difference again. On the scuff controller, they're the same depth. On the PlayStation 5 controller, it sits in just a little bit more. So if you wanted a flusher mounting button, try and get your hands on some scuff buttons for your PlayStation 5 controller. Now keep in mind, I have had this controller apart, like I said, twice already. Once when I bought it and did the original mod, this is an unused controller. It's been built and tested and that is all. So it's got zero miles on it, just like this scuff controller, but we will, there are some shocking differences that I have noticed already just from looking at that because I've been in this controller enough times that I know, I know what it looks like in there. Here is the comparison of the back. So this is the scuff backside which has the, the buttons and everything attached to it. This is the extreme rate backside, which has a trim piece that you have to screw on to their custom backplate. Now this does have a little plastic piece that allows the light to travel through it. So let's get a close up shot of these. I'm just gonna go like this so that I can get my roaming cam out. So first we're gonna look at the scuff controller. Now what I noticed first off is that there is a neat little circuit board here. The extreme rate also has a circuit board, which you can see right there. It is vastly different from each other though in exactly how it's set up because this guy, you'll notice there's this button array. So these are our buttons here. Here's your K1 over here your K2, K3, and K4. Now that, those might be backwards. Scuff has created their own little shell that goes in here. Now this is not a new controller, it's just a new battery tray. They've created a new battery tray because when we compare the battery tray on the uh, factory PlayStation controller, you can see the battery tray there. You can see where the little wings would go up there, which they do on here. So we'll pull this off in a minute. The battery itself looks to be exactly the same. The haptic feedback is, again, very identical looking. The wiring for it, however, is curiously different. So they've got a tiny little piece of epoxy that they've put over the haptic motor, which this haptic motor does not have. Now, does that make it different? The part holding it in is the same, but they might have changed the haptics. They've changed the shell. I have no idea why they would epoxy the wires on like that, but they did. Again, everything about how the build quality of this is does scream high quality. Like they did not use cheap plastics for their new battery tray, which houses their buttons. Normally I try to keep the cameras out of view, but in this case, it's, it's somewhat unavoidable. Let's take this one off first so that when we open this guy up, you guys will see what I'm seeing. So this guy is just held on with double-sided tape. In fact, I'll undo that, undo that, like that, so that I can peel this guy right out of there like that. And then that allows me to get the battery out like that. 
So this is the PlayStation 5 battery, and then there's just one screw in here that holds the battery tray down. That gets the battery tray out, and you can see the circuit board for this controller. There's nothing really special about this. It's just a regular PlayStation 5 circuit board because it's a PlayStation 5 controller. This guy is significantly more interesting. So the first thing we got to do is get this battery out of here. Once you get it lifted, it does just slide out like this. Like that. And then it pops off. Comparing battery to battery. Absolutely identical. This is a PlayStation 5 battery and so is this. In fact, they're both made in the same place. They both have the same specs. Now, can I get... This is going to be interesting. Does this battery tray come out? Again, one screw. And then, keep in mind, all these buttons are attached to this battery tray. Wow, that is a rat's nest of cables. So I've flipped these upside down so you can see. Obviously, the battery tray in the PlayStation 5 controller is designed to come out. This one, you remember I just said it's a rat's nest. Look at this. Now this is a ton, a mess, a mess of wires in there. Here's the thing to look at here. The, the one thing we're gonna notice, the custom tray houses each of the buttons. Now these buttons are just pushed with plastic nubs on the back of the controller. The other thing that I do notice, so they'll have a separate wire on the circuit board that goes back to this main controller board. And then this controller board will also have a connection that goes around to the back side. So right here, this wire here goes to the back side of the controller where the pads connect up to. That's actually the same as what this guy does. It's just it goes behind here to get to the pad uh, points right here, which is a very easy point of entry. The only thing stopping me from going in any farther, they've soldered a wire from here that goes around to the trigger button over here, just right there. These guys, we've got these little wings. They replace the ribbon cable from the adaptive triggers to the main board, and they introduce this piece. This allows us to intercept the signal off of your trigger buttons and then map those to whatever else you want. That's how Extreme Rate approached this. What these guys did, rather than have a custom ribbon cable, they've got this wire right here, which just solders onto this ribbon and then comes around here to intercept that signal. And then they've got just solder points for the negative of that same ribbon cable. And they do the same thing on this side, exactly the same. They just have one yellow wire that goes over there. They do not intercept anything off of that ribbon cable there, which is interesting. You can see on that circuit board, it says BDM010 and then underneath a 1084592 and then EPGW. And if I go over here to the PlayStation 5 controller, it also says BDM01000845921 EPGW. It has that marking there which marks up with that one and it says side B up here. Up here it says side B, and right there it says side B. I mean, this is, for all intents and purposes, this is a Sony controller. Like, this is, there is nothing, nothing third party about this. Nothing at all. Not about the guts of this controller, anyway. So they've tacked on their add-on little piece here. They have made new molds for a lot of this stuff. But everything else, like this whole trigger assembly, is all very much first party. There's nothing clicky about those. There's nothing. It's all. So uh, one of the questions I had was, could I put uh, clicky trigger buttons on this? Absolutely, I could. There is nothing stopping you from popping it out. The clicky attachment is only this part right here. So you could easily, easily swap your clicky system. So let's put it all back together. We're going to put the screw back in for this battery case. 
We'll put the battery back in. Now I need to plug it in first because I'll never get my fat fingers in there to plug it in after. Really, it looked like we were in this really far, but we're not. We weren't because this just pops back on now. All we do is go like this, get that out, and it just massages back into place very gently, very carefully. When you're done and you're this far, you want to test your buttons. They should click, click, click. Click, click, and click. So all the buttons are good. And there you have it, both controllers back together, tested and working, functioning just fine. Now, summary of what I found by going in there. Number one, is this a third party controller? I, I think we need to discuss what third party is. Every single piece of the mold on here does seem to be third party. So Scuff created all of the pieces that I pulled off, they're all Scuff. In fact, when you pull them off, they say Scuff on them. The thumbsticks say Scuff. Even the triggers say Scuff. They all have a Scuff texture to them. Once we get to the inside, it looks like the haptic motors have been adjusted in some way so that they are different, but the root of them are the same. So the actual component in there is the same. The shell on the outside has been modified in some way. For what reason? I don't know. The battery basket's been changed. Everything, like at some point you ask yourself, was it changed needlessly? Like, did they need to change that? Did they? So sure, the back shell, yes, they needed to change that. Did they need to change the front shell though? This part right here. I guess if you want to have your own custom shells, but even these buttons are different. So the only thing that's the same between a PlayStation 5 standard controller and this would be the shape and every single component that is electrical or has to do with it. So they've got all the circuit boards. Those are the same. The button systems, those are the same. The haptic feedbacks, those are the same. The adjustable triggers, the same. The battery, again, the same. So I still say that this is a modified controller, a modified first party. And the reason I say that is because all of the components that they swapped on here are accessible in the aftermarket world. The back cover on here is aftermarket, it's changed. The face plates, this part, you can change those. You can buy them. You can buy new trim rings. You can buy all that. The only thing I haven't seen that's like an aftermarket thing you can buy is a modified battery cage because really only scuff for the guys that need to change that. If I can buy all that stuff like in the modding scene and I can put it on this controller, if I went to the store and bought this controller as a PlayStation controller and I stuck all those pieces on there, is this now a third party uh -huh. controller? Like, is it? Can I tell everybody this is a third party controller? I say no, because it started life as a first party controller. You can't take a first party item and just change stuff on it and call it something else. You can't go buy your own car and then put on a body kit, put a new stereo in and some new rims and then start calling it a GT Canada branded car. It's still a Corvette that just has stuff that I stuck on it, right? And that's kind of my argument here for this. One thing that I did find, everything in here is very high quality. The solder jobs are good. The ribbon cables are high quality. Everything about this controller is high quality. Is it $400 high quality? Again, I'm struggling with that. But I wanted to see what the inside of the controller looked like. I wanted to see what components were the same, what were changed, if any, and what are the future options for this controller. So I can positively tell you that if you were only able to get a scuff controller that did not have the clicky triggers and you wanted clicky triggers, you can go on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description, to the same clicky triggers that are on this controller and they will fit in this controller. I can guarantee that. Also, the thumbsticks again are swappable with extreme rate swappable thumbsticks. The trim pieces, could be swapped with modification, which we already discussed. The back shell, you will never change that because this is a scuff proprietary back shell and it is required for the back button features that this controller has. So overall, I hope you enjoyed the discovery process that we went through on this video and we'll see you again. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. 
And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.